Scripture to sing. If not, we're going to get started here with Tales of Temples and Tomb, and I'll let Miss Boyd get you started. I'd like to thank everyone for coming this evening. This is a fourth grade program. Uh, this evening they're going to start with, as most of you I'm sure know, um, you've been making musical instruments. It's been the highlight of the fourth grade year and a large part of their classroom grade. And um, they've, after, after the concert, I hope all of you get the opportunity to see all of the instruments lined up in the hallway and around the library. They were judged this afternoon. Tomorrow the students will find out the top 20. Um, we had five judges working on that, and the top 20 will be on that Chicago-based website and also in the Shepherd Argus. But um, without further ado, they're going to play their instruments. One song for you, and following that song, they will be as quiet as they can, um, taking the instruments back out through here, and there will be some speakers up here, some fourth grade speakers, telling you a little bit about Egyptian life and um, things that happened with the ancient Egyptian times and the Nile River. And so that's kind of interesting what they have to say with, for you as the students are walking out with their instruments. So if they would like to come on in, fourth grade, you may come in. What's Moses?
To understand the everyday life, the objects included in the tomb the Egyptians used in their daily life artifacts from a few towns that have been excavated and, of, and hundreds of documents written by the ancient Egyptians shed additional light on their life. Much of day-to-day -day running of their whole households, however, remains obscure. Family life. The nuclear, nuclear family was a fundamental circle in it of ancient Egypt. The father was responsible for the economic well-being of the, fa the family, and the mother su supervised the household and cared for the upbringing of the children. Household furnish furnishings. The few furnishings in the ancient Egyptian home were simple in design. The most common piece of furniture was a bow stool, used by all Egyptians, including the pharaoh. These stools were made from wood, had leather or woven rust seats, and had three or four legs. Most kitchens were equipped with a cylindrical baked clay stool for cooking. All clothes were almost always made of linen, which is made from flax. Flax is a plant with small leaves, blue flowers, and stems about two feet tall. Flax is pulled out of the ground, not cut. This was hard work and was mostly done by men. Egyptian mummification. Originally, the Egyptians did not mummify their dead at all. In early Egyptian times, the dead were simply buried in reed caskets in the sand. The searing hot sand caused the re remains to drag quickly, preventing de decomposing. But when they began constructing tubes and wood caskets from the dead, the sand Maybe I'll have to jump could across. not get to the bodies. The bodies then started decomposing, so the Egyptians developed an elaborate mummification process. <laughs> the mummified body was then placed in its coffin along with several amulets to ward off bad spirits and grave robbers. In death, the Egyptians still needed his body, so it was vitally important that the body was well preserved so the Egyptians did not have any problems in the afterlife. People usually went barefoot and carried their sandals, wearing them only when needed. The sandals were made of palm fiber and braided papyrus. Papyrus is a tall water plant that grows in the Nile Valley. Nile River. The most important geographic feature in Egypt is the Nile River. It was the lifeblood of ancient Egypt and still makes life possible in the otherwise barren desert. The Nile River is the longest river in the world, over 4,000 miles. They wore a new wig each day. Both men and women wore wigs. Wigs were made from human hair or wool. They wore, they wore curled wigs for special occasions. Priests washed several times a day, and they had to remove all body hair to be pure enough to approach the god. They could not wear leather sandals or wool clothing. Those were considered unclean. The Nile was the principal means of travel for the people of ancient Egypt. They developed various types of boats, including cargo, passenger, funerary, and the naval vessels to journey on the river. The Nile also served as a source of food for the people of ancient Egypt and was crucial to agriculture in the region. The river came with fish, and the ancient Egyptians consumed many different kinds, including catfish, mullet, and fruit. Men and women wore long, see-through robes that were plated. Better off people wore wide cloth, clothes of white cloth. Wealthy people did not wear more jewelry or fancier clothes to show the wealth. They, didn't, they did wear gold jewelry and the most transparent clothes. Whether you were rich or poor, you wore jewelry. They wore rings, necklaces, and ear studs. The jewelry was made of gold or colorful beads. The necklaces were made with 
turquoise, or lapis lazuli stone. Egyptians took a lot of care of, of uh, took a lot of care over their appearance. Since they were new, no new styles, they took pride in keeping themselves and their clothes spotlessly clean. The workers wore lion cloths made of animal hide and linen. They also wore simple tunic dresses. Lion cloths were fastened around the waist and worn by men. Most of the slaves were naked. Women did not dress without washing. Rich people had a tiled area for washing. After washing, they rubbed themselves with scented oil. Then they placed a large rectangle of linen over their heads, gathered the loose corners up, and tied them in a knot below the chest. Long ago on the banks of the Nile lived alligators, crocodiles, and other reptiles. Egyptian people lived there too. Because of the river, there was many things to do. The Nile is famous, as we all know. They depend on the river so many years ago.
You can hold them. Don't need them all. Each kingdom had a pharaoh, and they were in command. They had to make decisions, and they had to rule the land. And when the pharaoh visited and he comes your way, make sure to bow your head down while listening to me. I'm sure when you climb into the slide, I'll probably get dizzy from an incredible height. <laughs> the Great fast? Pyramid is the largest of all. Believe it or not, it's over 500 feet tall. for a very short time, but he began to rule at the age of nine. Have you guessed who he is? Have you guessed his name? King Tut, of course, the one with the fame. Sit down. 
I really don't like the next topic you see. It seems kind of scary, don't you agree? Oh, don't be so silly. Mummies aren't real. They can't walk in tough like me and you, so what's the big deal? Well, how can you be sure of that? Look over there. Got you. Saturday in Egypt has really been fun. I feel kind of sad that it's over and done. Well, then go to the library and read more on your own. Check out some books and study alone. We sure have had a lot of fun. I hope no, you have too. What's this one say? And that much is true.
This is the time in all of the grade level shows that we sing the final song. And the final song is always a song that I teach to the entire school. Um, in this case, it's grades one through five. And it's called Put on a Happy Face. And all of the kids in the school have learned this. And at this time, if any of you, grades one through five, would like to come up and join them, you can stand in front of them on the risers and sing along with us. We would very much be happy if you did that. <laughs> Uh, at this time, before we sing our final song, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what will happen afterwards. Um, first of all, I want to make a very special thank you to Mrs. Sheila Henderson who um, around noonish today helped me set up all the tables in the hallway and put the papers on and made it look so attractive for your children's instruments to be on it. I'd like to please give her a hand. She spent a couple hours here with me. Um, and um, what else was I saying? Oh, after this song, um, what I'm going to be doing is taking some pictures up there. I might bring some kids over here, so I'll be moving the sound system kind of over. At that time, if um, parents would like to go out, and I encourage you to look at the instruments and all of the fine work that actually a lot of the parents helped with. I couldn't believe um, some of the judges today were commenting on how many dads helped out, which is just so neat. It seemed to be a real family effort um, to make such fine instruments with the kids. And they really seem to be conscientious of doing a lot of work themselves and having moms and dads teach them how to do things. And um, I applaud you. That was, it's outstanding to look at all of those instruments out there. Um, after each class has um, had their pictures taken, then the students may take their instruments and their reports home, please. Um, and then tomorrow, the top 20 will be announced. And then they'll, the top 20 will need to bring them back again um, for pictures. Um, and there was one other thing. Oh, and if there might be like five people that could help me um, take the tables back up after the concert today, any parents that would be willing, I'd really appreciate that. There's a lot of tables out there. But anyway, again, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it.